I mean, for me, this absolutely gets at the heart of the matter. Um, if I could choose shoes that require 20 times fewer resources than other shoes, and they were just as good or better, I would think that we have an ethical obligation to do that. Um, similarly, if you can choose something that requires 20 times the resources of something else, and the only difference is you might have a, a palette preference, you might get a momentary additional you know, pleasure from one of the things, but the other thing, nutritionally, is actually better for you, as vegan foods are, uh, then it seems to me that we do have an ethical obligation to choose the thing that requires exponentially less, fewer resources. Um, I do actually try to not have too many pairs of shoes. I have one pair of dress shoes. I don't have black and brown. But, uh, <laughs> but, I do think, but I do think even having black and brown dress shoes, like you are going to eventually wear out both of those pairs of shoes. Like there is actually a reasonable positive benefit to, you know, unless you're Imelda Marcos or you know, <laughs> mega shoe collector. Um, but shoes last you an awful long time. You know, you choose to eat me, that lasts you a few moments. Um, and I don't know how much greater the pleasure is to you to have, you know, chicken or a burger or some pork chops, um, but it's not that much greater than eating a plant-based meal. But it is you paying somebody, somebody else to waste 20 times as many resources. Um, and as I will discuss in my, in my closing, it is literally pushing up the price. I mean, there is absolute consent among agricultural economists at the World Bank, at the UN, um, everybody who looks at the issue that buying meat causes people to starve to death, um, whereas buying shoes, probably not so much. So um, I, I guess the thing I'm, I'm continuing to grapple with, I like your uh, distinction of the idea of a virtue but not an obligation. What do you see, like what are LDS or just ethical obligations? What sorts of obligations do exist ethically for human beings? Um, a couple of examples of what you see as ethical obligations and what is the moral, moral paradigm under which you say yes, this isn't just a virtue but it's something that we should all do. Okay. Uh, this is a great question. This really, I think this gets down to some of the fundaments of Christianity. If we could have a whole other discussion about poly and Christianity, that would be awesome to try to bring these things out. But I think when we look at moral imperatives, a lot of the moral imperatives are don'ts, which is kind of have, has a negative feel. But for example, for someone to be ethical, let's say one thing they don't do is they don't steal. You know, if I were to come and take something from someone else, and fortunately take it from them, it wasn't mine, we would all agree that's theft, and that is a moral imperative not to steal. We have a moral imperative not to kill. We have, we have a moral imperative not to do a lot of, of these extreme things. Now, I think where a lot of true Christianity comes out is which virtues we decide to make part of ourselves. Uh, Paul is my favorite scripture writer of all time, and I love how he talks about not just living rules, but actually inculcating principles into who you are, so that the law becomes dead to you in that you are living who you inherently are as someone in Christ, as opposed to following a bunch of rules. Which is one of the reasons why I do have an objection to this idea of moral imperative or prefer to talk about virtues. There are any number of Christian virtues. At any given time, there are hundreds of things that any one of us could do to improve who we are as a person, as a husband, as a brother, as a parent, as a BYU student. We have to choose which of those we're going to try to bring into our life. You, know, you talk about the leaders of our church choosing priorities. <coughs> We have to choose our own ethical priorities. Maybe my priority for this week is to be a more compassionate person. Maybe to criticize my friends less or to be more positive. Maybe my maybe the virtue I'm going to work on another week is being a vegetarian. Maybe it's going to be doing some service for someone else. I think that moral imperatives are few in Christianity. And the virtues we can choose from are many. And when we choose which virtues we're going to focus on in our lives, I think that's a personal decision. I think it's a decision we make as we study the scriptures, as we commune with our God, as we interact with the people around us. And I don't think we can delineate them into saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. When we're talking about virtues, it's a personal thing. I think it's something that each of us need to choose to do.